Good morning, everyone, to uh, the Senate Majority Press Availability. Of course, this morning is day 70. Um, a lot of things going on this week. We've got uh, a lot of the large legislation we talked about is being processed. Of course, we just received the budget at the end of the week last week. Um, so we'll be doing budget hearings and finance all week. We uh, are working on a, the governor's motor fuel tax and Senate finance. We've got the crime bills from Senate finance this week. Our main objective here is to uh, wrap up the big pieces by day 90. Hopefully we have some agreement with the House on what that's going to look like. And uh, the, the uh, Senate is pressing forward on a 90-day session. So that is our plan. And uh, we, hope, we hope to hear the same from the other side. I, I make a point of not poking the House or either party. We have a lot of different uh, belief systems here, and they all have to wrap up into one final product here by hopefully day 90. And uh, that's our goal. So I'm going to hand it off to Senator Coghill here, and uh, then Senator Meyer. So it might be pretty easy. Senate Bill 54 and 55, which are the two bills uh, uh, adjusting some of the things we did in the uh, uh, criminal justice reform, will be up in the uh, Finance Committee this week. Uh, in the Judiciary Committee, probably uh, uh, what we're doing is uh, confirmations like so many others as we head into the last weeks of the session. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, minors and e-cigarettes. Uh, we'll be dealing with uh, some controlled substance issues that seems like every year uh, some, some new drug comes up. And this year, pink is the, uh, the one that we'll be having to deal with, very dangerous. Um, and then uh, the uh, uh, public safety officers uh, uh, are encouraged to have Senate Bill 69, which is Egan's bill, uh, which makes a, a requirement for declaration if you have a firearm in the vehicle. And, uh, uh, it's just uh, we're going to be going through that this week. Probably uh, uh, that's about the intent of it, except for we're, uh, we've asked the Attorney General to come back because of uh, an issue with the uh, Clutina RS-2477 and the uh, potential agreement that the Governor and the uh, Attorney General and Department of Natural Resources uh, are looking at. And uh, we're concerned uh, what that RS-2477 might uh, look like if it's uh, negotiated with Atna. Uh, it's something that uh, is of interest to me. Uh, it's a legal issue as well as a resource issue. So it's one of those access issues into Alaska. Other than that, uh, Mr. Majority Leader, uh, kind of watching the big picture issues, uh, the budget, and, uh, and how we're going to pay for the budget are kind of the big issues on day 70. Thank you, Senator. Senator Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Well, th this has been a little different year for me, you know, having been the presiding officer the last couple of years and not uh, having been on many standing committees. Uh, now I'm on lots of standing committees, resources, judiciary, labor and commerce. And it seems like we've been uh, um, very occupied here recently with uh, confirmation hearings. Um, but uh, they're, they're going well. and, and uh, um, None of them, none of them, um, with the exception of maybe one or two, have been very controversial. Um, you know, as far as the number of questions asked. Um, but as the rules chairman now, there we really don't have much in the rules committee, and that's not too surprising for the first year of the two-year cycle. Um, the uh, of course the the big bill last week was the Uber bill, which we spent uh, unusually a uh, long time for the for the Senate anyway. Um, uh, but that that passed pretty pretty easily, and then um, today is uh, Mr. Majority your smoking bill, smoke-free bill, which as you know passed the Senate uh, last year, and, and uh, we're going to try it again twice. Uh, we're going to try it again this year um, with 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 the House. But um, as you as you mentioned, Mr. Majority Leader, this is uh, day 70, so we're less than three weeks left in our session, and I think come day 90 that the the public's going to see that the Senate has done their work. Uh, we've done exactly what we said uh, we were going to do. We, we passed the PLMB some time ago now, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we passed a spending limit. Um, and uh, and uh, now that we have the operating budget from, from the House, um, uh, I would imagine that will come out of finance here uh, shortly. And of course, the capital budget, uh, I know 
Senator McKinnon is, is working on that as well. And um, there won't be much in the capital budget, so that I don't think that's going to take finance very long. So we're right on schedule, um, at least the Senate is, uh, uh, to, to complete our business in the 90 day period. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Meyer. Questions from the group? Becky, start with you. Thank you, Board, the Associated <coughs> Press. Senator Chick, you mentioned pressing forward on a 90 day session. If my math is right, and I'll say if my math is right, um, the last day of session is Easter, the Easter weekend. So in, in the past, the Senate in particular has been <coughs> mindful of letting members not necessarily have to work the whole time, be mindful of their religious beliefs. Um, How is the Senate planning to approach, I guess, what is typically um, a very chaotic last weekend with um, with Easter? We've talked about that. Um, there are uh, many of us that hold Easter as a holiday of importance, and um, we talked about having that Sunday morning off. We're going to work around it. Uh, we're, you're probably going to see us meeting uh, in the afternoon once uh, people have an opportunity to observe what's important to them religiously. But uh, the timing is unfortunate, uh, but the schedule is the same. So we're going to be aggressively working and hopefully we're close to that point um, by that Saturday. And uh, we'll see what needs to happen on, on Sunday to finish up on time. Mr. Petroni, if I can just follow up on that, I, I, you know, in the past two, we've, we've uh, actually given folks the time off in the morning and then uh, pick back up at 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And depending on what's going on in the day 90, that's, that's another option as well. Yes, Matt. <coughs> Good morning, uh, Matt Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, uh, just coming at the sort of end of session question from a different perspective, just seeing uh, what's happened, sort of the extensions that have happened over the last several years. Um, why why shouldn't the 90-day limit be actually repealed um, since it's something that seems to not be making a whole lot of difference uh, recently? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why I don't think it should be. Well, I mean, it's up to the people. The people are, are uh, is the group that put it in place. We're trying our best to respect that. Of course, the Constitution still allows 120. Um, governor can call us back for any reason he sees fit. We can choose to um, come back and work on those issues, or we can decide that those are not issues of importance. However, uh, I think the 90-day session is important. I, I think we should be able to get our work done every year in 90 days. Um, some people use the time to sort of drag things out and wait for the last minute. Others are just natural procrastinators. But we're not cramming for an exam here. We need to get our work done and we need to st keep our schedule and stay busy from, from day one till day 90. Some of these larger issues may take additional time, um, and that's going to happen from time to time. Last year was kind of a new world, I mean, with, with the um, fiscal deficit that we were facing and the pressures that people faced on the POMV bill and that sort of thing. I mean, I, I, I think there are going to be years when we have to spend additional time, but the people have asked for 90 days, and, and frankly, with a person of applicable experience for most of my life, I look at the workload, and I think we should get it done in 90 days every year. If I can follow up, Mr. Jordan, and, and I know Senator Cogdo, you've been, you've been here longer than both Senator Machiki and I, but if you recall uh, um, last last year, or two years ago, we. We actually stayed till two, three in the morning trying to get everything done and to adjourn on that 90 day. Um, unfortunately, uh, when ever since we've had to use the uh, savings, the CBR, uh, it just seems like we, we go past the 90 day. Um, you know, the negotiations take longer, but for the most part, the work is done. Uh, it's just that the, the negotiations on the CBR vote always seem to take a little longer than uh, than, uh, than than what's anticipated. So. But prior to us dipping into the CBR, we, we were pretty much adjourned uh, <coughs> within that 90-day period. Then, of course, um, the governor then uh, called us back in special sessions, as, as was mentioned, which is always his right to do. Well, why not put the 90-day limit as a constitutional amendment? 
Nat, let's, I, I normally like to answer every question, but I think we've answered that. Constitutional is 120. It allows some extra time for folks that can't get to the finish line on time, I suppose. Our goal is 90 days. That's what the people have asked for. That's what we plan to maintain. James. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Uh, right now you've sent some bills over to the House. The House has sent triple that number over to you, but we're not seeing much action on the House bills yet. What's the status of those? James, do you want to uh, give us anything specific on bill numbers you're questioning? Because um, we're I'm curious if it's in general the policy of the Senate to wait until a certain <coughs> point to consider House bills. Oh, I am. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the com uh, committee chair here that uh, has the opportunity to review some House bills. I know how quickly we're waiting. We're first of all we're waiting for key bills and sent in finance and have been waiting for them, but we're processing them as they come across. But I'll hand it off to the Judiciary Chair. For, as for me, uh, we're just taking them as they come for the most part. Uh, I do have House Bill 24 up today, which deals with that, the pink issue, and we'll uh, deal with a, a Senate version of that in that committee. We've passed out uh, a couple other House bills. So uh, I don't know that it's uh, anything that I've particularly tried to weed through. We try to get the Senate bills up so that they have a chance to get over to the other house and be heard. Uh, but I know that a couple of our bills have found their way uh, into the Finance Committee and have met up there. So uh, I don't know that there's a particular strategy that, uh, that I've been a, a part of to hold them up. Certainly uh, the bigger uh, negotiating ones, you watch those closely because the agreement that we have to pass a budget this year is probably more important than the bills that you may or may not be able to pass within a two-year legislative session. So I think the budget is uh, and how you pay for it are the big questions. Yeah, just no question. Just on a quick follow-up, I mean, we've, we've sent across the only um, tier one level bill that's passed from one body to another this year, and that is 26. We're awaiting some of the bills that we hear about and we've been watching but uh, have not yet seen. So uh, focused on the budget, primarily focused on Tier 1 bills, which are bills that are sort of must-haves if this state's economy is going to survive and recover. And uh, we'll worry about the Tier 2 and below bills um, once we have an opportunity to see some of those other bills move and see that they're being taken seriously. I understand 26 is calendared this week. Um, lots of POMV choices. One has passed the Senate. And we hope they'll view it favorably. We hope they support our spending limit and <coughs> draw limits um, that are a part of the bill. And we, we feel it's important that they have a fair hearing and hopefully make it across the finish line. Maybe I could just add one more thing to that, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, the last 15 days have shown uh, that when you have uh, real intense discussions, we get our drafters uh, very, very tied down. And so the amendment process on the House and some of the amendment processes within our own budget committee uh, kept our uh, legal team uh, going in, in a very, very high uh, pressure test, uh, which slowed other bills down both on the House and the Senate. And so you saw not only the time schedule of the debate on the floor, but the uh, ability to get drafting in the uh, subset of committees was slowed way down too. So I thought over the last 10 days you probably saw that slow down. And 10 days in a 90-day session is a big deal. So just on time management, that's probably a bigger thing than the strategy of trying to move bills. L Liz had a question, then I'll come back over. I think Austin had one as well. Liz Rains with KTDA. Senator 